You're listening to the X-Zone Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. All Hit Radio! Welcome to the X-Zone. A place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. And welcome back to the Exxon, everyone. My name is Rob McConnell. We're coming to you from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Now, if you'd like to send me an email, xzone at xzoneradiotv.com on all social media sites, xzoneradiotv. And our main website, where you can find out all about the Exxon Radio Show, past shows, and much more, www.xzoneradiotv.com. And I'd like to say hello to our new audience listening to us right now on the Mutual Broadcast Network, www.mutualbroadcast.com. Now, my guest this hour is a lady we've had the pleasure of having on the show before. Kate Kunkel is her name, and she is an expert on the way sound, audible or inaudible, affects us, body, mind, and spirit. Joining me now from Markham, Ontario, is Kate Kunkel. And Kate, welcome back to the Exxon. Great having you with us. Oh, thanks, Rob. Great to be here. All right. Tell me how you, well, tell me I know, but tell our audience how you started your, your quest into discovering how sound can actually affect us well it was it's from the time i was four i don't think you want me to go back that far but that's really when it started when Mm -hmm. i started playing piano as a child um but then when i I got a little older and i took up the harp uh, as a result of a dream actually a real dream like go to sleep at night dream Mm -hmm. i had this dream of playing the harp and i began to play it and I ended up working in Las Vegas as a harpist, as part of a duo called Crosswind. And while I was there, I ran into uh, somebody who, who just loved our music. And when he got sick, um, he asked me to come and play for him. Um, his, his wife actually arranged it. When I went there, he was actually dying. Uh-huh. And I played for this man as he passed, which I've got to tell you, Rob, is the most amazing experience I've ever had in my life bar none, to be there at that time, to be playing for him and to be tuning in my harp to his breathing, to that experience. And that was when I realized that there was a whole lot more to this harp stuff and this music stuff than I had really understood. So it started me on my quest, and I began research. And of course, at the time, there really wasn't that much internet, you know, you, you did everything with books mm-hmm. and, that sort of thing. Anyway, I, I learned about how uh, a gentleman with Parkinson's was able to overcome many of his symptoms by learning to play the harp. I learned about vibroacoustics, and it just changed my whole life from being pure entertainment. I mean, I still love to just entertain as a harpist, but it got me on this whole other um, realm of what music and sound can do. And then over the course of several years, um, I did research, and it ended up in a book called The Healing Sound of Music. And then a couple of years later, it ended up where I I started doing vibroacoustic therapy and learning about the the power of pure frequencies to heal. And it's been just an amazing experience ever since then. You were speaking about the healing um, properties of, of music, about sound. Are there any negative properties? <laughs> yeah, there are, actually. And it's not just audible sound. I mean, we mm-hmm. lots of us get aggravated or we feel nervous around music we don't like. I mean, True. me, if I hear, like, one of those cars going down the street with that boom-boom bass, I oh want to gosh. take out a gun and shoot somebody. <laughs> Most of us in our generation tend to want to do that, but it, it really bothers me. And it makes me actually physically feel mm-hmm. distressed and, and nervous. So that audible sort of sound, many of us recognize that. You know, jets going overhead, living on a train, like near train tracks, that sort of thing. That is all sound that can uh, affect us, but music itself. And it's not just uh, emotional, it's also physical. I mean, uh, have you heard about those experiences or those experiments with plants and different music? Yes. 
Yeah, it's really fascinating. So for our audience who, who hasn't heard of this, there have been many uh, um, experiments done, and one was done with um, rock music on one radio station and uh, sort of classical, light classical music from another radio station being pumped into these plants that were controlled for every other variable. So light, heat, sun, everything like that was controlled exactly the same amount of watering, humidity. Anyway, the plants that were in exposed to the rock music didn't grow. The classical, the soothing classical music caused the plants to grow twice as fast. So, and then eventually, after I think it was six weeks, the plants that were exposed to the rock music just died. They just didn't survive. So, that, what does that tell you? It's not a psychological, it's not an emotional effect. This is purely physical effect on an entity. Kate, stand by. You and I have to take a commercial break. We'll be right back. Exo Nation. Kate Kunkel is our guest. www.thehealingsoundofmusic.com. My name is Rob McConnell. This is the Exxon Radio Show. And we'll be back on the other side of this commercial break, talking more about music with Kate Kunkel. You're listening to the X Zone Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. Now, you see, that's what I call music. Me too, yeah. definitely. Kate Kunkel, welcome back. It's always great having you on the show, Kate. Um, so you, you, tell me about this gentleman that you were playing your music for at his time of passing. You said it was one of the most memorable moments in your life, and I was wondering if you'd be kind enough to share it with us. Sure, sure. Um, when I arrived at um, Steve, his name was Steve, mm-hmm. when I re- arrived at his home, um, the the family we had already gathered. I didn't realize he was that sick. I just knew that I was being asked to come because they knew that there was nothing else they could do, and he'd asked for me. So I went over there, and the whole family was gathered, and he was in his hospital bed in, in the living room, and he was mostly unconscious. And I, I came in, but I, I tuned up my harp, and then I walked in, and I, I touched his hand, and I said, Hi, Steve, it's Kate. Because he had called me that little girl with the harp. So I said, it's Kate, that little girl with the harp. <laughs> so, I mean, I was like 35 at the time or something. But anyway, um, I went in and I, I, I held his hand and I he didn't really ex- acknowledge me. Ex- I just felt a slight pressure from his hand. You know, just, I know you're there. I, I feel you. Mm-hmm. So I leaned my harp right against the bed so that the, 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 the bow of the harp was actually touching the mattress of the bed. And I started off, and I remembered from when I had met him before that he really liked um, Irish music. And he really liked the the speedy stuff, the the jigs and stuff. So I I picked a couple of those, and I just played them, toned them down a little bit. But that's what I kind of played. And, Rob, it was so amazing. After about two songs, my my energy connected with his in some way I, I can never explain or understand. But we connected. I guess at a soul level, and we started, and I started playing music that I didn't know. Like it was just really? music, and and it was very um, breathy. Like there was lots of space in it, but it was like my fingers weren't actually playing. Like th- there was something else playing my fingers. <laughs> I don't know how to explain that, but anyway, um, that went on for about ten minutes. And and I could and I felt that I was with mm-hmm. Steve, that I was breathing with him. The breath was his. And then all of a sudden, Rob, it was just like, it was gone. It was gone, and I looked up, and he was gone. And my, <laughs> like, I, I, I can never, to this day, after all these years, I still can't explain that feeling. But I, I played for a couple of minutes longer. I just played, I think I picked Amazing Grace or something, and I played mm-hmm. it for the family so that they could all gather around, and then I kind of bowed out and packed up my harp and went out to my car and sobbed. I mean, it was such an emotional experience for me. I sat there for a good 20 minutes because I could not drive. And I kept thinking about 
what had happened and what that connection was and how it had affected everybody in the room. It wasn't just me and him. It was everybody. We were all feeling that. And, and I just sat there and I thought about it. You know what? I've got to, I've got to explore what happened here. I had to figure out what had just happened. And that got me started. You know, I've, I've had people on the show before who have talked about channeling. And some people talk about automatic writing. And I'm just wondering if you were actually channeling music from angels. I was channeling it from somebody, that's for absolute sure. And, and I, now today, since then, mm-hmm. I did some um, uh, studying uh, about, uh, about how, how that worked. What was I tapping into? Right. And I found this guy, Joel Andrews, who is a harpist. And he um, introduced me to the, the Healing Code of Tones. And apparently, this code of tones has, was handed to the ancient Sumerians from the star people. Take that for what it is, okay. but that's what he understood, and that this code came from the stars. Whether that's angels or aliens, mm-hmm. I don't know, but it came from the stars. And they have passed down this ancient code of tones to, um, to, to musicians of all stripes. But harpists especially seem to um, gravitate toward it. So I learned this code from, uh, from Joel, and I started experimenting with that. So basically you take um, the letters of a name and the dates of the birth, and you have to have the birth date because lots of people have the same names, you know, even in, in any cult, across cultures. Sure. So this kind of, I, from what I understand, this gets you to tap into the Akashic Records. What, what, you know, I don't, I'm not an expert on that. All I know is that it gives me something to focus on. It gives me like a key. Firstly, I get the key from that that I'm going to play in. Mm -hmm. And then I will sit and I'll go into sort of a light meditative state and I'll just wait. And I'll just kind of go back and forth and do some arpeggios. And then suddenly the music comes again. And that, that's what I call my, the healing code music that I do for people on, on solo harp. Generally speaking, um, this is from, for people who have some kind of illness or emotional or psychological issue that they need. I've done a lot for cancer patients and people going through big changes in their lives. This seems to be a way to tap into the information they need. I don't know what it means. All I know is that the music comes through my fingers. And I guess, yes, that is channeling. And I, I believe that's what's happening there, whether it's my soul talking to their soul or angels or mm-hmm. I don't know what it is. But I know that it works. In fact, I just, one of my students, I teach harp as well, and one of my students ordered one of the recordings, and she played it every day, and she was feeling really big changes coming over her, how she was able to play the harp and her other healing work. And she said to me, but Kate, the last week, I I didn't feel like I wanted to listen to it. And she said, I think it's done its work. I think I got what I needed out of it. And I thought, yeah, cool, that's great. Obviously, we tapped into something mm-hmm. that you needed with the music. That is, that is truly amazing. Well, isn't there a saying that, uh, that goes, uh, music calms the beast? It sure does. Yeah. It sure does. <laughs> yeah. When I, I used to have two white wolf dogs. My oh God, I love those dogs. And the uh, oldest one, or the youngest one, who was adopted after going to another terrible home, she had a lot of issues. She used to put her paw right on the foot of my harp when I would be playing. And the first piece of music I ever, ever composed on the harp was composed for those dogs because of the way they would get close to me when I played that harp. Tell me about uh, the, the experience that you've had with, with children playing your music. Uh, <laughs> you know, th- th- it's amazing that, that kids seem to just have that open... Yeah mindset that those open little souls that they haven't been told yet that they can't or that it's impossible or they don't they haven't absorbed that i guess is more like it they may have been told Thank it, but God. they still think that everything is possible i have a yep. grandson now uh, oh, a congratulations yeah the <laughs> love of my life oh. anyway since the time logan was born he and i have played the harp and and 
he sat on my lap from from a tiny baby, and he would put his hands on the harp and feel the the uh, vibration. And now that he's three, he'll stand at the front of the harp and try to play it that way because it's too big for him to reach around. But it's it's that's so typical of kids. That happened all the time in Las Vegas when I was playing there because we were at the Excalibur, and kids would be coming through, and they would just sit there and just. They loved that calming piece because, you know, at the time when we first started playing there, Las Vegas, they were trying to be a family-friendly um, venue, which, of course, didn't work. So people would bring their kids, and they'd be, you know, pulling them hither and yon from Excalibur to the Luxor to see the volcanoes, to see the <laughs> lions and the tigers. And the poor kids were totally frazzled. So they would come upon us and they would literally sit on the floor as close to me as they could get. Lots of times they'd want to touch the harp just to feel it. So that just tells you, even in that state, in those places, how important it was for them. What is the history of the harp itself? (laughs) Well, we think that the first harp was probably found as a result of a hunter and his bow, because the string of the bow would make a sound just like a string of a harp, right? Mm-hmm. If you if you plucked it, it would make a boing. <laughs> and so I think the first ones, that, at least the ones that I've been able to find, the stories that I've been able to find, it looks like there was a three-string, like a harp-type instrument. And it was literally a bent branch with three strings on it. And they would just pluck them and make music. And then the Egyptians got really into it. They They developed some pretty amazing harps. Um, and, of course, there, there's the ancient Celtic harps. I mean, they, the, the ones that we actually see existing to this day, generally speaking, are from the ancient Celts. So, yeah, they've been around a long time, as, probably almost as long as the drum. It's really? The drum and, and the flute, of course, the flute from a, a bird. Uh, they, they figured that the first flute was a bird um, bone because they're hollow, mm-hmm. and they would put little holes and they would make sound that way. Where did the association between a, a harp and an angel come from? <laughs> you know, I honestly don't know that, but it probably also has something to do with the fact that um, in the in the Bible, anyway, yeah. we we hear about that, and that's I honestly don't know where it first came about. Music can control people. We've seen this happen before. Aren't aren't uh, different military organizations? trying to control people or control crowds with music or with loud sounds well, these not, days? Not so, much with, not so much with music, but with sound. Yeah. They, they have frequency, like they call them the sound cannons. Right. And they're, they'll just, it is such a, a, a frequency that actually causes intense pain in the ears. And, and it's, it's, I don't know whether it could burst the eardrum. I haven't heard that, but the pain from... The, the actual frequency itself. And that's what I'm all about. I'm, I'm learning so much about frequencies from, since I became a vibroacoustic therapist. It's all about the frequency. And that includes whether it's music or just sound, you know. So, so yeah, it's the frequency. But the military have used that. They use it. The riot police use them. Well, you know, I've gone to, I've gone to concerts, and you get these mega, mega speakers, <laughs> and... You know, I don't understand how kids can stand it. I really don't. You know, like I'm showing my age here. Mind you, I went to the Beatles concert. I went to the, you know, the Rolling Stones, the Beach Boys. Sure. You know, what I call music. But anyway, that's, that's for another show. I, 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 you know, and you see the kids just getting together. And you've got 20,000 little units that have joined into one major unit. Yeah, yeah. That that's that's basically it's it's a mood song. There there's a specific kind of pulsation. It's the pulsation. It's not the melody. It probably isn't even the notes themselves. It is the the space between the notes. So uh. if it's a dissonant um, interval, like a perfect fifth is what we like. You and I and our and you know that's what we recognize as. Kate, a I hate to do this, but I've got to break in here for my uh, news oh, break at the bottom of the hour. Exo Nation. Kate Kunkel is our guest. The Healing Sound of Music dot com, and we'll both be back on the other side of this break as we continue here in the Exxon from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away.
You're listening to the Exxon Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. Radio's authority on the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology. Celebrating 25 years of broadcasting. Broadcasting around the world and to the great beyond. Welcome back, everyone. This is the Exxon. I am Rob McConnell. We're coming to you from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. And if you'd like to send an email, exxon at exxonradiotv.com on all social media sites, exxon Radio TV, and our main website, www.exxonradiotv.com. Kate Kunkel is our special guest this hour, the healing sound of music. Kate, where do you think music was is going to be used in the future, besides for entertainment purposes, of course? Uh, you know, I, the, it's such, it does my heart such good to see that they're actually using music in medicine. Like, um, a lot of research has been going on about using um, music, like in uh, wards, uh, with uh, preemie babies. Um, there's, there's been lots of research on how much it helps them gain weight and they're able to use oxygen even more efficiently when they listen to soothing music. So it's used there. It's used with Alzheimer's patients and, um, and Parkinson's patients. As, as a matter of fact, when you use the 30 hertz sound, so we use a special frequency, uh, a special program of 30 hertz, and we, we pulse it back and forth um, top to bottom, right and left, on vibroacoustic devices, it actually helps Parkinson's patients get a better, have a better gait and their tremors can stop. Now, it doesn't keep the tremors away mm-hmm. unless you keep using the vibroacoustics, but if they use it every day, the tremors can actually stay away. It's freaking incredible. And then there are other things, like with um, uh, endorphins. So if you have the right kind of music, it will help increase production of endorphins. So those are natural pain relievers, right? And it's, so that will help in many things, but it also can help speed healing because you're not, you know, getting those pain uh, symbols, all the sing- signals all the time, which creates problems with the healing. It controls the heart rate. It reduces stress. I mean, there are so many ways music and pure frequencies are being used on a medical level. Um, the other, but on the bad side, not but the bad, the negative side, mm-hmm. um, they can use um, music to program people, you know, and that's kind of scary. Um, there was an incident at a hotel in Las Vegas some time ago. Rock music, it, it had a, a really pulsing beat. You know how they have it in the speakers all yes. through the casinos and the hotels. Yeah. And there was, it was used as mood song, so they mm-hmm. have it all the time. There were actually customers experiencing petite mal seizures because of the pulsation. Unreal. How weird is that? Unreal. I thought in, I thought in the casinos, they they wanted you to stay there, not have a seizure and freak out. <laughs> but see, but what they do is is in restaurants. I'm sure you've been in a restaurant when you almost can't stand to be there because of the music. I've walked out of oh, yeah. restaurants. I agree. Because of the music. Yeah. So so. You know, there, the music isn't for people to help them digest and to stay. It's to keep the freaking staff going. And it's to, and it's, the music is chosen not by people like me who know about music. By the staff. It's chosen by designers who really? make it match the decor. Oh, absolutely. Designer absolutely. music. Yeah. They know, and they know nothing about the psychology of music. They know nothing about what it does to you. Because if you have the wrong music, playing while you're eating, it actually disrupts the digestive process. So, I mean, there there's so many things that can go wrong mm-hmm. if you have the wrong music playing when you're when you're eating. Um, obviously, it has a huge effect on stress levels. Um, sleep. I think a reason a lot of the kids have so much trouble sleeping besides the screen time, they spend so much time on looking at screens, it's the music. Because it affects the way your body actually, it affects the cellular motion. So it can really have a negative effect on you. You know, that makes perfect sense. Think about it. Yeah. If you had something drumming, drumming, drumming on you, pretty soon your body's going to start going to that beat. And that's not where our, our bodies are supposed to go, right? That's we, right. We have our own natural rhythm. Yeah. <laughs> it shouldn't be disrupted like that. 
Let me ask you, uh, when it comes to children, uh, kids with with all these new psycho, uh, what do they call them, uh, you know, like ADHD, ADD, you know, instead of giving the child Ritalin, which is, a, which is in the same pharmacological family as cocaine, right. uh, wouldn't it be, could music help here? Oh, absolutely. And, and there are lots of studies. In fact, the, the, I, I mentioned vibroacoustic therapy before. The man who invented this, mm-hmm. this therapy, his name is Olaf Skill, and he's from Norway. He taught kids that, now we, now we use the term autistic, but it right. wasn't that term back in the 70s. He was teaching. He was a special ed teacher, and he liked to play because he was also a musician. He would play music in the classrooms, and he found that these kids would be um, drawn to the bass speakers of of the of, of his music system, and they would literally lean against it or hold their hands to it, and it would calm them down because he wasn't playing like harsh stuff. It was just stuff with a bass. So he cut the cut the back out of an old couch and put speakers in it and started experimenting, having the kids sit there and started experimenting with what kinds of frequencies, because he was a musician, he understood the range of hertz, and he found that if he would play something around 40 hertz, these kids would calm right down. They would start connecting with him and with each other. So... That got him on this whole stream of, of research, and now it's been been done by you know supplemented by many other researchers. How particular frequencies combined with certain um, he calls it B class music, but it's, it's class it's music that goes with the frequencies, and it actually will help um, the kids come back come back to to here because they have a, a, autistic kids anyway. It's, it's trouble. They can't really connect with the outside world. There's there's no real connection. Right. And 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 too much stimulation is very upsetting to them. So vibroacoustics, because it's not a, a lot of stimulation, but it, it is gentle, and you can you can get in there and reach them. And it's also good for ADHD. I mean, lots of programs are developed now to, for kids to listen to when they're studying, so that they can actually pay attention that their focus is on what they're doing. So there are huge, there's huge potential instead of all these freaking drugs. As you could have subliminal messages watching a screen, and mm-hmm. remember this in the 60s, how, how yeah, big this was sure and how many do. people got nailed, all the advertisers <laughs> that, were, that were caught using subliminal messages in, in the theaters and on TV. Could yep. the same thing be possible in music? Absolutely, absolutely. I don't know. I mean, remember when they used to say that was it John is dead or somebody's dead? Yeah, in, in, I um, buried Paul. I buried yeah, Paul. I buried Paul. That I was buried it, yeah. Paul. Revolution yeah. so, number nine. Yeah, exactly. Now, was that really in there? I don't know, but of course it could be in there. In yeah. fact, we use subliminals all the time. Kelly Howell with BrainSync, she has a whole range of of subliminal um, messages in music to help with weight loss, to help with studying, to help with. Even I have one of hers for walking because I hate exercise. It's my worst thing. I'm terrible about exercising, but I know I need to do it. So I got one of these, mm-hmm. and it's, like, really powerful. It gets me out there. It gets me walking. I keep pumped up. And, and yeah, lots of, there's lots of subliminal used in music and, and, and combine that with specific frequencies because you have different frequencies for different brain states, right? So that's all used. All right. So what steps can one take to protect yourself from... Uh, on the day-to-day basis of of negative music, of subliminal music with messages that you really don't want. Yeah, yeah. Well, first off, turn off the the. Um, I hate to say it, turn off the radio. Yeah. <laughs> Although the, people don't listen to that much radio. I mean, the kids really don't listen to that much radio nope. anymore. It's it's mostly on their iPods or whatever they're listening mm-hmm. to. Um, but I think. The main thing for everybody is to really pay attention to how you're feeling when there are certain sonic influences. So, like we talk about mindfulness, be mindful of how you feel when you're in that restaurant with that music or 
you're sitting beside someone who's got the headphones on and you can, and it's leaking through and you hear that boom, 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 or whatever it is. Be mindful of that. Recognize it because you will start feeling like your stomach will clench or you'll feel angry and you don't even know why. Be mindful of, of, of those feelings in your body and maybe thoughts coming into your head that, you, that don't make any sense. Why are they there? Generally speaking, it will be an audible sound of some kind that will be affecting you. And if you can, extricate it from your, you know, extricate yourself from it or get somebody to turn something off or down, although it's kind of hard. People get all tied up about that. But if you can extricate yourself from it, that's the first step to take. Now, a lot of us live in noisy areas. I happen to live in a beautiful, quiet neighborhood, but I lived downtown Toronto at Spadina. Ooh. On Spadina. <laughs> I mean, the streetcars. The it was traffic right on, and, and everything the traffic down there. And the people coming out of the bars. Uh. And it was uh, So what I did, I learned to sleep with headphones, like the little earbuds. Mm-hmm. And all I had in them, all I had in them was um, like ocean sound. So it it would it would mask those other sounds. So I I learned to to ma- to get away from it by masking it. And sometimes that's all you can do, right? Because that's just the situation you're in. I tried it, the ocean sound once. I really did, but there was one big problem. What? I kept on having to go to the bathroom. <laughs> well, that could happen. And I'll tell you, I had to <laughs> so stop so- using it so I could get some sleep. <laughs> So maybe bird songs or something. I <sighs> or just white sound, just white noise. Well, just you know white what? Noise works too. My my wife turns the fan on in our room. There you go. And you know, like yeah. that, that seems to work for her. Yeah, yeah. I, I, in in fact, when I when I was living there, I would have the air conditioner mm-hmm. on or the fan or something because that would help too. Yeah, yeah and. You know, is that good to have that frequency all the time? I don't know, but it's a heck of a lot better than the other sounds that I was being exposed to. So, But I think the big thing for everybody to take home from this mm-hmm. is to be mindful of what you're feeling in certain areas. What am, and, uh, go on, dear. I'm sorry. I, I was just going to say, and then if, if you find that something else is coming up, you know, there are lots of sound therapists out here. I'm one of them. There are people who use gongs. There are people who use tuning forks. There are all of those things. So you can you can use sound therapy mm-hmm. to counteract other things that are going on in your life. So so you can use you know you can get away from certain sounds, but also go towards those sounds, those those techniques, those tools right. that we have at our disposal. Is there anyone that you've ever come across? who is allergic to sound, who has a negative uh, reaction to any sound? Uh, The only person I know is my young cousin who is autistic. And he goes around all the time with those big padded noise-canceling headphones on because he can't can't handle noise. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, that's the only person I personally have run into that has a really hard time with any sound, although I have heard of it before, but I have not, I have not treated anybody with it. No. Is there any connection between uh, a sound disorder and tinnitus? You know that ringing that people yes, get in their ears. I have tinnitus. I have tinnitus, and I think it started with with uh, a, an infection from diving because I, I do scuba diving. Right. And I got an infection once, and shortly after that, I, I experienced tinnitus, and it, it comes and it goes. It gets worse and better. Um, I haven't seen any difference, in, and even though I treat myself with vibroacoustics, mm-hmm. it also doesn't seem to be helping my tinnitus, although it has helped other people's. So, yeah, I, there is, but we don't really actually hear in tinnitus, right? It's a brain thing. It's not right. really your ears. I, isn't it so, a nerve? That, that, is, that is, yeah. 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 That's horrible. It's very frustrating as a harpist because there are certain mm-hmm. frequencies I will play at the top of the harp that send me off. My my ears just really hurt. I heard something that maybe you can help clarify, that deaf people can actually hear certain frequencies and certain music. Oh, well, yeah, you can. It's like Beethoven, he heard his piano by putting his 
by, by weighing on the floor with it, right? He took the legs off his piano and he could hear it. Hmm. That's why they have bone conduction headphones. Have you heard of those or seen them? No, I haven't. They're not headphones. They're bone conduction they, they, they're a way of conducting sound through the bones. Is it, are they the ones that go behind the ears? Yeah, they can go right on the bones behind the yeah. ears. When, when I was a kid, they used to have one that would, they would rest on your collarbone. Hmm. It doesn't, it, it, just as long as it's conducting the sound through the bones, right. then it, it will go directly through the, to the brain because it's, it's the frequency. It's all about frequency, man. It's all about that. I wonder if uh, Beethoven is the source of that saying, playing by ear. <laughs> he might be. <laughs> he might be. I yeah. don't know. <laughs> so where do you see music in the next 10 years? Are we still going to have boom, 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 boom? Yeah, boom, yeah. Boom, We're going to have that as long as people keep buying it. And people are going to keep buying it because they keep programming them to buy it. There are, that's one thing. I, I just read this article a couple of days ago about some research that's been done, and I, I, don't, have the, I don't have it in front of me. I, mm-hmm. I think it was the New York newspaper or something, that they, are, they have done some studies to see what um, frequency, not frequency, interval causes you to be more susceptible to being um, entrained. So the perfect fifth that I talked about, yes. people are more likely to look at details of things, and they're going to make their shopping lists more detail-oriented. People who listen to this dissonant fourth, which is something that we are not used to and we don't particularly like to hear, but they will put it in music to make people less um, discriminatory. So uh, they can't discriminate between things as well. So if you program that into the music, which is very easy to do, you can get people sort of addicted to it. So you've got that going on, and, and that is a way of programming. I mean, we know that music now is not like it was. Oh, I hear I hear music coming up. That means we've got to take my break. Please stand I by. So. Kate Kunkel is our special guest. What a lady. She's known as the Harp Lady. Her website, www.thehealingsoundofmusic.com. This is The Exxon. I am Rob McConnell, and Kate and I will be back as we wrap up this hour here in The Exxon from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away. Hello, lab post. What you knowin'? I come to watch your flowers growin'. Ain't you got no rhymes for me? Do it and do 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 You're listening to the X-Zone Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. Welcome back, everyone. Kate Kunkel is our special guest this hour, www.thehealingsoundofmusic.com. And Kate is known as the Harp Lady. First of all, Kate, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Great pleasure talking to you. Continued success with all the wonderful work that you do and all the people that you help. Oh, thanks. It's, it's a great joy to be back in Canada doing this. Well, we're yeah. happy you are. We're not going to let you go back. In fact, if, uh, you know, you know how Donald Trump is saying that he's going to build a wall... <laughs> You know, between the U.S. and Mexico, and he's going to get Mexico to pay. Well, we're going to build a wall between Canada and the U.S., and we're going to get Donald Trump to pay. There you go. <laughs> uh, the the movie Close Encounters of a Third Kind, a big da, 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 theme, da, da, da. right? Mm-hmm. A big theme within that music, uh, within that movie, was the music, the music as a mode of right. communication between extraterrestrials and humans. As a music expert. How possible do you think that is? Oh, I think it's probable. I, I really think that that is, it is the music of the universe. I mm-hmm. mean, it, people, there's even music in space, right? Have you heard those recordings yes, of I the have. sounds in space? Yeah. So we know it's out there, and, and there has to be, because music is math, right? All the intervals mm-hmm. are math. Everything is math. 
that has got to be the common language and the way to hear the math is through music that's the way to connect i'm 100 percent convinced of that what did you think of that movie oh i loved it i loved it every time i will every mm-hmm. time it's on i watch it what is your final message for the exo nation tonight listening around the world I would like people to really pay attention to their environment because it does have a huge effect on your health and you can make it better by by listening to to good music by good when I say good I mean tonally beat wise you can learn to play an instrument it doesn't have to be for performance it just has to be for you because that has such a lot to do with your health you know, to keep your mind active. Mm-hmm. You know, music really can help with so many things. Be aware of your sonic influences and influence them yourself in a positive way. Kate, if there's somebody listening tonight who would like to try and and use uh, vibroacoustic therapy to help them out, how can they contact you? Oh, they can contact me um, right through my... I have another website called vibroacoustictherapy.com. Mm-hmm. Um, and they can reach me there, or they can reach me through my, my uh, email, which is kate at, let's use theharplady.ca, because that's the easiest one to, to do, kate at theharplady.ca. Are you going to be playing anywhere in Canada soon? Yeah, I play just about every week somewhere, but it's always for private functions right now. I haven't done a lot of big stuff lately. I played with the Markham uh, Concert Band, and I've mm-hmm. done some stuff in the summertime, but not so much now at this time of year. Kate, I want to thank you so much for joining us. Always a pleasure. Take care of yourself, and I look forward to the next time you join us back here in the Exo. Thanks, Rob. Take good care. You too now. Keep uh, keep the music coming, Kate. I sure will. Good night now. Good night. Exo Nation, my guest this hour has been Kate Kunkel. She is known as the Harp Lady. www.thehealingsoundofmusic.com or www.vibroacoustictherapy.com I'll be back on the other side of this commercial break with the news as we continue here in the Exxon from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Send me your emails. Love hearing from you, Exxon Nation. Email is exxon at exxonradiotv.com on all social media sites, Exxon Radio TV, and our main radio website, www.exxonradiotv.com. I'm Rob McConnell. I'll be back after the news. Don't go away. <laughs> 